first of all welcome everyone to agile coaching uh, round table uh, the topic for today is less framework and uh, we have uh, kalpak uh, joining us uh, for uh, giving a wonderful session uh, on less framework so over to you kalpak all yours thanks thanks ramya uh, well i don't know whether it would be wonderful but i'll try to share how much i can from my side uh, well before we uh, I, i start talking about the topic and present certain things a uh, very quick introduction about myself and uh, maybe to towards the end uh, last 5 minutes uh, i would love to hear from you all as well you know a little bit more uh, there you all belong to so i'll i'll talk about myself and my trajectory especially from since we are talking about less so from less perspective also uh in my experience in working in scrum uh, majorly i have worked in less so my last 4 years i have worked uh, exclusively on less implementations currently i'm working and i'm uh, uh, an employee of uh, jp morgan chase where they are very exclusively implementing less across the org so i am a part of the chase uh, arm of uh, you can say ccb or corporate chase bank arm of jp morgan chase where they are i would say exclusively implementing less uh the reason why i feel that we should talk more and more about less today uh, i mean today as as i i mean to say not just today but in today's times which we are looking at uh, is also because we are in the kind of org wide or lob wide transformation activities uh, just give me one second sorry i just had a Uh, so the reason why I feel we should more talk about less today as we speak because I know and uh, I'm I'm pretty sure that org wise, be it any sector, uh, banking is just one of the sector which a lot of us are you know some or the other associated with. But we talk about healthcare, uh, uh, we talk about uh, retail, we talk about manufacturing. A lot of sectors are more and more using Scrum. right and the problem is happening that as more and more scrum is getting implemented um the question comes what when there are more than one teams the question or the you can say the dilemma comes when uh, there are multiple people involved so then the question then we go back to the basics of uh, you know what jeff sutherland crafted for us in uh, scrum guide that oh no no we should have uh, uh, the scrum team of around 10 members right and that's that's what our basics are the fundamentals are but today we have multiple teams and today we have multiple people involved in less so uh, i mean in organization so uh, who want to implement scrum so that's where i think the main dilemma comes at how do we implement scrum when we have so many people involved because if you have 10 different people or 10 different teams working together to implement scrum but they have common goals they have common objectives they have common uh, you can say product goals to be specific how are we going to tie them together i would say this was kind of a um, a very initial start from where less originated long back in 2006 a very brief history also 2006 was the time when uh, craig who was the co author of uh, less framework he originated or rather came up with something called as less now let me tell you one thing and let me uh, it's it's one of the confessions which uh, a lot of less trainers i'm not a less trainer i say i'm i'm a less practitioner right uh, i have seen a lot of less trainers or less uh, coaches telling that less is a result of experimentation we had scrum with jeff sutherland and the team has came up with right which we all know by heart by now but less is an effect of an series of experimentations uh, which had come where they spoke about scalability that how are we going to scale from one team to maybe more now more how many more we don't know but there can be many more scrum teams and that's where less came after a series of experimentations and i i would share you uh, as i told you at the end a uh, list of case studies uh, my current 
employer is one of those employers also i know jp morgan where uh, in those days earlier uh, they had in 2013 it was one of the case studies primary experimentation of um, you can say incubation of less successful implementation had happened i know bmw is one of the organizations i know bank of america is another organization where less has been you know successfully implemented and there are many such i'll give you the list and the case studies of it moral of the story is it came as a series of exp uh, experimentations uh, all came after a series of you can say iterations and then they brought less together now one question to uh, all of you while i share certain slides on the screen right now is what is less uh, is it a framework or is it a methodology is a question which uh, uh, always there and asked uh, anybody want to give it a shot what it can be a guess in the meanwhile i'll just share my screen uh i'm not sure if you are able to see my screen or uh, ramya or yeah we can see we can see. yes okay perfect can you make it okay so uh the question was what is less is it a framework or is it a methodology uh let me you know tell you in a very simple words if anybody asks you this question and if you get into a dilemma or if you get into this uh, uh you know analytical uh, mode of your you know uh, thinking that could it be tech uh, methodology like an agile or like a mindset or can it be like a framework like scrum answer is very simple i understand one thing less is scrum now scrum is a framework we all agree right i'm sure a lot of us uh, have been uh, butchered by our agile coaches or anybody or trainers whenever they say no agile is a Uh, uh, or scrum is like a methodology no sutherland has made it quite clear that scrum is a framework uh, an open framework which we implement in our organizations and uh, fill it the way we want and that's what less is so let's get up basics quite clear it's very simple and i think this is very important for us to understand and also somebody of uh, maybe a lot of you may want to uh, get advanced certifications in less i'll talk about the less certifications also little bit towards the end uh, this is the base of it if you understand scrum you would understand less i know uh, one of the um, coaching session i had and that individual was a new entrant or a newbie to scrum right and he wanted to know less now the problem is unless and until you know scrum very well unless and until you know the accountabilities of a product owner of a development team or developers we call it as today or a um, a scrum master you would not effectively understand less because less is over and on top of scrum it is scrum at the heart of it right and as you see on this slide it's very simple it is a multi team scrum or it is as simple as saying that whenever we have multiple teams coming together it is nothing but we are implementing less it's just an acronym of large scale scrum now are we saying that scaling framework like less is the only framework uh, under agile no i'm sure a lot of you are into agile uh, uh, for a quite a long time you would agree that there are many frameworks right uh, so why less well i can say the reason why uh, and I, i'm sure um, uh, safe the way safe has also been getting uh, successfully implemented in many organization lot of parallels with less the beauty of less is if you know scrum inside and out understanding less is like this so organizations who are very much aligned to scrum right the organizations which have implemented scrum very well in the sense to the t and i know many such companies for them upscale upskilling themselves and implementing and aligning themselves to less is not difficult right so we'll see in the next couple of slides what are what is the difference between scrum and less but uh, technically this is the you can see a very one liner definition of less less is scrum applied to many teams working together on one product right it is a multi team scrum i would say additionally i'll add a couple of more things to this scrum is a framework 
it's like a baseline. Less is more an organizational uh, framework. It's more applicable to organizational. Scrum uh, is something which um, I know a lot of people say, oh, I, uh, I and I know that Ramya, you also spoke about uh, how effectively you also, uh, you know, plan your sprints for your marriage. Scrum is with all of us. Scrum has also have become a way of our thinking, right? Uh, like they say, agile mindset, Scrum being a framework has been internalized by a lot of us. Less is purely an organizational concept, right? It has its own set of rules. It has its own set of, you can say, uh, um, there are certain conditions and that's what less is. OK, now let me quickly get to the next slide, uh, which talks about how less is different from Scrum. Now this is a slide which clearly depicts certain nuances of it. I'll come to less huge, uh, but I think by this depiction, one thing very clear to us, Scrum is one team. We know that our Scrum guide says that team of 10 members or lesser, right? Earlier it was plus minus seven, and now we are talking about 10 or nine members uh, Scrum development team. That is Scrum. Now what is less? Less is when we talk about two to eight Scrum teams together, or rather dev teams together, right? That is less. And then there is something called as less huge. So the moment you go more than eight teams, like there is nine and above. Now what is the, what is the, you can say, um, how threshold for that above figure? We don't know. There can be many teams. They make it 50, 100, depends. Depends on how you're going to, maybe less huge may not be applicable in certain cases if you're going too above. But then anything more than eight teams will be less huge. But primarily what I'm trying to bring your attention is this is where less boundary starts. That is less and less huge. That is the moment you go more than one scrum team. Let us try to understand that we are not typically doing a ideal scrum. I know, I know that there are many companies and many teams who uh, definitely are not really calling themselves that they're using less, but, but they are still following scrum amongst two, three teams, which is perfectly normal. But then by the books, if you see, if you're talking about more than one team, like if you're talking between two to eight teams, we are following actually less. And if it is more than eight teams, we are following less huge, right? Now, there are certain changes to, of course, when we are talk, uh, if you are talking about more than one team, I'm sure you would agree that the roles and the events, what are the three, uh, you can say, important concept of our Scrum Guide? Roles, events and artifacts, right? So we know that a Scrum framework has three roles. That is a product owner, Scrum master and developers, right? Uh, we ha typically have five events. That is uh, a sprint itself being an event. We have sprint planning, we have daily scrum, we have review, and finally we have retro, right? And we have three artifacts. That is a product backlog, we have a sprint backlog, and we have a increment. These are, this is our basics, correct? Now, when we say that we are going more than one team, and when we are talking about less, certain differences start emerging. As you see here, more than one scrum master. So less has more than one Scrum Master if you have two to eight teams. Depends. So if you have, let's say, three teams, then a one Scrum Master would be a difficult job to handle. I'm not saying not doable. There are Scrum Masters who handle two to three teams very effectively. I myself do it, right? But it becomes a challenge. So by the books, it is advisable to have more than one Scrum Master and, of course, more than one team. But the product owner typically for two to eight teams kind of remains the same, right? But when we talk about more than eight teams, now here, this is where some, some major changes keep happening and we'll talk more about that. That is this entire stuff about less in terms of roles, that is one more than one scrum master, more than one team and one product owner will remain as it is plus something called as an APO. And APO is nothing but an area product owner. So uh, you might have rightly, or I, I'm not sure how many of you might have guessed it, 
look at what we are talking about more than eight teams now one po handling more than eight teams in such a huge scaled environment is practically impossible right because we will be talking about product backlog we'll be talking about let's say 15 teams working on one big product with having let's say 100 to 150 product backlog items and one PO handling all those modules would be too much. And that's where out of experimentation, this role has emerged that is called as an APO, that is ADR product owner. And this slide is the nutshell of, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is the basic difference between Scrum less and less huge. I think there was one more slide. I'll just take you through that. But I would also uh, request you all that at this point, if you have any questions, feel free to stop me. Yeah. Yes. Kalpe, uh, Kalpak, I have one uh, question over yes. here. When you spoke about uh, APO, right? So uh, I would want to know more about it. What sure. exactly the role of APO is? How is he dif he or she is different from no uh, the normal PO that we have in uh, the uh, Scrum framework? And when you say that APO, does that mean that APO is uh, is a collection or or a group of uh, product owners. I mean, could you please uh, put more light on that? Sure, I would partially answer it right now and partially maybe after 15 minutes when we talk dedicatedly about APO. Understand one thing, name of APO that is area product owner uh, gives us some insight on what his role can be. Area or in, in terms of less, it is called as a requirement area. So I'll come to that when we talk about, uh, you know, um, uh, more about APO's accountabilities. But in a nutshell, if I can tell you, APO report to the PO, one PO. So you have one single PO, right? And that PO will have, let's say, around three to four APOs working with him or her, right? And every APO will have two to three or more scrum teams or, or I would say development teams, right? And I think by this hierarchy, something would click in your mind. Why would we have these APOs? So by the name itself, I think something would, uh, you know, click in your mind that, hey, APO or it is it is more inclined to the area. And in I'm sure we all are averse with how the IT requirement backlog is. So APO is nothing but a requirement area product owner. So if I can, yeah, uh, I mean, of course, I'll elaborate when we talk about accountabilities, but just to give you an example, uh, if you are talking about, uh, you know, a migration project, right? Workflows is a requirement area, right? Uh, downstream applications consumption is a requirement area. So they may have two different area product owners, where that one area product owner may be working with two to three different teams. So area product owner is nothing but a product owner who is working hands in hand with the one single product owner because a scrum concept remains the same. Product owner, just one product owner. And that one product owner would be working hands in hands with the different requirement area product owners and with their respective teams. I'll deep dive more on this when we talk about APOs. So can yeah. we say this? Uh, it is like similar to a uh, RTE really trained engineer who is called as a chief scrum master, wherein all the scrum masters would be reporting to that RTE or a chief scrum master. Something similar. Yeah. yeah I. Uh, yeah. Should go ahead. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So instead of scrum master over there, here we are calling them as product owners. Yeah, I mean, but uh, we need is, to understand one thing, one thing that the accountabilities of APO majorly are similar to what a product owner accountabilities are. There would be scrum masters, right? There would be the less scrum master and that would not change. But I understand what you're trying to say. Yeah. It's more of a scaling. So uh, yes. as we talk about, look at this diagram. This diagram itself says that if this is your product owner, one product owner, if you're talking about, let's take an example, let's say 15 teams and your entire product backlog is divided into, um, if you have 15 teams, so let's say around, uh, um, uh, you can say 15 different requirement areas, or if, if not 15 teams, so we can say, if we divide 15 into, let's say 16 teams, so four different 
requirement areas. One APO will look into four teams. So that is a one requirement area. So your backlog would be actually divided into four different requirement areas or logical requirements, you can say, and will have a one APO and they will there will be four teams working with it. So that's precisely what an APO is. You can say a cluster of requirements, right? Let's also understand. So, Kalpan, these there are two more questions. Yeah, go ahead. So, I think there are three more questions from people. So, yeah. you you may decide whether you want to answer right away or maybe. Please, you please. Want to, uh, uh, I'll I'll tell you if I can uh, cover it up later. But please shoot those questions. I can see those. Let me see. First is from Jaya. Uh, Jaya is asking how is this compared to Safe Framework, where there are multiple Scrum teams across the value flow with agile release train solution release train so to answer to this question i would say uh, let me be uh, very uh, uh, specific here and not get into the details of safe but i would say primarily safe or less or other scaling frameworks under agile or even overarching agile uh, co-agile kind of models have a similar objective. That is to implement uh, agile in different teams or multiple teams rather. However, where less is specifically different from safe is less is scrum. Less is very much only scrum. Whereas safe, and I'm sure uh, uh, I'm not a safe expert, but I'm sure Ramya and Vivek and all all of you who have who have hands on on safe, you would agree that safe is much more than Scrum, right? It's it's more of an overarching agile, not specific to Scrum. You you have you talk about Kanban, you talk about a uh, lot many other agile principle. Uh, uh, you can say frameworks. We also talk about XP, etc. But let's understand one thing: when we talk about less, we are talking about Scrum, and that's primary difference between less and safe for less you have to know scrum inside and out and if you are not um, hands on on scrum it would be very difficult for you or anybody to understand or implement less you cannot basically so i i think that's the basic difference and how much ever i have uh, my little exposure to safe is it's more of a overarching agile uh, concept right any other question if you want me to take right now? Yeah. Yeah. So there is uh, one more question. Is APO more of a group product owner? And uh, there is one more on the similar lines. APO will report to CPO, that is chief PO. And one more sim on the similar lines, four teams will share a single product backlog. Excellent. So since the, since the questions are connected to APO, let me cover that, right? So. Uh, Look at this slide. Um, I think this slide would give you an insight on what the APO or why do we need APO. Now, in less, we are talking about 8 to 50 teams also at times, right? So as you see, your entire product backlog is divided into a concept called as requirement areas. Now, for every requirement area, we have an area product owner. So the person who asked this question that does an area product owner uh, report to the chief product owner. Yes, but technically the word is not a chief product owner, but your understanding is correct. The APO reports to that product owner or you know, so as you see this diagram, these are APOs, right? You can see there are three APOs and these are three requirement areas they are working with and every requirement areas have their scrum teams, right? And this is the primary or rather chief product owner sitting out here and he works with these three APOs. Right, as you see here now, uh, coming back to requirement area point, the reason why I want you to focus this more is once you focus on this, you would understand the reason and the need for an APO also. We know what is the difference between a feature team and a component team, etc. Right. We also know that in Scrum or majorly in Agile, we try to encourage more of feature teams so that we talk about cross functionality. We talk about uh, one team having different skill sets together, right? Now that's where uh, you know this requirement area concept also becomes important. That when you talk about a project or a product, it is divided into different modules. And when we are talking about, uh, see, we are talking about uh, 
15 teams. So do you think of 15 teams, um, they definitely must be working on a big product, right? It's a scaled agile. It's a scaled scrum framework. So definitely we need a product definitely of that kind of a stretcher. Let's take an example LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a is an application today we all know. Now LinkedIn is a huge product. One single scrum team of 10 members cannot do anything into it, right? So that's where your requirement areas come. Now if you try dividing LinkedIn into different requirement areas, I'm sure some of you all will agree that one requirement area will be the entire, uh, you know, uh, on the real time basis posts and requests, etc. Another requirement area can be the job module. For example, the require uh, LinkedIn job module, there can be many more. So that's where your feature teams come into picture. And exactly that's where your area product owner uh, role comes into picture. Now, what are the uh, you can say? Let me also go on the APO. Uh, you can say uh, goals or what a APO should focus on. As you see in this diagram, lot of things. And APO, the accountability. Uh, yeah, sorry. Go I'm ahead. sorry to interrupt because uh, I'm sorry to interrupt Rohita here because you're moving ahead. I didn't want you to go back and forth. I had a doubt here. Sure. Go ahead. So, uh, so uh, I I went to the safe thing. Uh, so mm -hmm. I I know how, what the safe framework and all that is. See, the main big uh, difference I observe here is only on the product owner's side we are scaling, but on the scrum master side it's always the scrum master, irrespective of how many teams coming in. But in safe we have the scrum master side also being scaled. Can that be a major difference, or did I understand it wrong? No, you are you are correct. Uh, actually, uh, you know. The, and that's where you know uh, the uh, earlier I mentioned about uh, uh, more of uh, what is the differentiation point between less and safe. Again, less is completely based on your Scrum. The base is Scrum. It is more of Scrum rather. So as you see this diagram, uh, you know this is Scrum Master Services. So we know that the Scrum Master looks after a team, it looks after old product owner, it looks after organization. Unless we add a fourth dimension to it, he also looks after technical excellence. So when we say technical excellence, uh, it is more about the entire integration part of it. It is more about CI CD pipelines. You know, I mean, he doesn't need to be expert in that, but he strives for the technical excellence process. So from the process perspective. So coming back to your question, yes. We don't have something like an area scrum master or a scale scrum master or like what you rightly said, safe very nicely uh, does those bifurcations for the scrum master. But in less uh, and here, uh, you know, as far as my conversation goes with uh, uh, the less coaches as well, they have not done any changes to the scrum master. Uh, uh, you can say uh, nomenclature per se. Product owner, area product owner came into the picture only because we have a concept of area uh, requirement area. Yeah, so that right? is where again and I might because I, I was just driving yeah, yeah. you just, towards just, my just, actual uh, question. Uh, let, let, let me just one complete here. Okay. Had there been no requirement area, I doubt there would have been any area product owner because what I'm trying to understand and try to reiterate here is uh, Less is purely based on Scrum where they don't want to even change anything out of the Scrum guide. They are very loyal to what Scrum says in terms of accountabilities. The only reason why they brought area product owner and a couple of additional events into picture, which we'll go on in a few minutes, uh, is just because we have an additional concept of requirement area. And that additional concept has also come because we are talking about uh, scale teams. We are talking about multiple teams. Yeah, coming back to you. Please go ahead. Yeah, so you exactly reached the point where I had the doubt. So the moment you started explaining more on the product owner side and you know scaling on the product owner side, it gave me an it gave me an impression that is this more suited for product based companies where you have clear bifurcation like this this product has three different or five different areas which can be split across different teams so that I can give the product ownership to. You know, there's a, I can have five APOs who will report to one PO and all that. If it's purely service-based company, which is more on giving support and, you know, 
the typical service based organization will this really be a preferred framework good question actually good question and i would majorly uh, say as per as my observation uh, i have seen less getting implemented more on the product side so i agree with you uh, because of the utility by which less functions because less is more based on the requirement areas and that's the basic premise of scaling into multiple teams so i agree with you and when it comes to service base see when it comes to service base anyway uh, you know when it comes to the service base model of uh, agile uh, we bring a lot of uh, models into picture anyway whether it is safe or uh, uh, you can say less or even uh, other uh, you can say frameworks under agile because that's how we try to cater different um, you can say service requirements now uh, having said that i know that cognizant had effectively uh, you know implemented less i don't know how many of you are in cognizant uh, i had uh, spoken with one of the agile coaches there who had narrated there is a case study also they had effectively implemented less um, under their entire uh, you know bfsi vertical uh, and there is a case study also about it so again uh, while it is subjective but i majorly agree with you i have seen a lot of product companies very much dependent on uh, 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 or rather choosing less because of the way it is created you know in terms of requirement areas and apos i think you have answered it kalpak as long as whether it is service based or product based as long as we can create yeah. those patches of areas i right. think it's implementable and, and just uh, uh, Kalpak, would... one more yeah go ahead uh, go ahead so when you mentioned about uh, the roles and responsibilities of a scrum master in less right wherein you mentioned uh, that uh, he strives hard uh, towards the technical uh, expertise towards ci cd all of that right and yeah. you also mentioned that uh, the essence of scrum master doesn't change in less uh, as compared to what it is mentioned uh, in the scrum guide right but don't you think here we are contradicting because as per scrum guide scrum master need not be technical right correct, correct. and we, uh, he only just br uh, brings a value in the sense of uh, bringing the agile uh, expertise values principles and all of that so Good question hmm. why are we then expecting scrum masters uh, to do or maybe not expect uh, or why are they made to do technical uh, uh, work where where they can uh, concentrate on the mo most on the uh, mindset and all of that got it a uh, good question ramya uh, see let me also reiterate what i said so scrum masters accountability written in the scrum guide that is intact even in less what is this fourth dimension which we are talking apart from organization team and product owner and you know uh, uh, the basic scrum master the fourth dimension of technical excellence let me also come to this slide is an additional aspect which less has added to the scrum master's responsibility so that's the reason why they call him as a less scrum master now i'll tell you why it is required here because a less scrum master see understand one thing again he need not be an expert of all these like he need not be an expert of devops he need not be an expert of architecture and design he need not be an expert of test automation what he is expected to achieve is a technical excellence in terms of process so when i say uh, and here again i'm not saying that again less framework let me uh, quote it it is not expecting the less scrum master to be technical okay there is nothing like technical or functional in any of the job accountabilities it is just expected and let me very be very purely uh, uh, quoted here less is more uh, you can say i would say the best suited or constructed more for it development projects more up, out of it when we talk about other domains um and when i say it as in i'm say it for banking it for healthcare it for retail etc okay when we we know scrum scrum is not limited to software right scrum, scrum is a multi sectoral and the latest edition of scrum is actually very generic scrum can be employed in non it projects as well less is very suited to it 
let me be very specific about it less is more of a it based scaled a scaled scrum framework and that's the reason why this technical excellence come so when we say it for banking it for retail healthcare it for manufacturing everywhere and also the technical excellence is more in terms of the process and if you ask me personally why i feel it might be introduced and by what i understand from the history of the experimentation of lesses see think about it uh you have to handle more than 2 to 3 teams in a requirement area we talk about lot of impediments or rather you know inter team and when we talk about it is if it is only for it and in today's world where devops or ci cd is the mantra or we have scrum bans also right a less scrum master has to understand or at least appreciate the technical uh, process part of it he may not be the one who can be an expert of it but he should know that what is the ci cd pipeline or how bit bit bucket at a high level is functioning or you know are the teams following the non negotiable guidelines of up uploading let's say um, you know certain automation evidences on the pipeline or not just to be you know an example just an example so he has to be up there basically his accountability remains the same uh, ramya his accountability in terms of coaching the team remains the same he it just that he now has an additional you can say dimension he has to persuade or coach the team to go more and more and follow more of automation update the definition of done more on automation coverage update the uh, you can say uh, their ci cd or jules pipeline or bit bucket uh, configuration more suited to what industry is needed etc cetera, etc cetera. so i would say it is more of a less scrum master additional dimension more on what scrum guide says right nevertheless what scrum guides accountabilities are very much in intact and a scrum master in less has to follow all that right so i i i, ho I hope if that could have answered your question yeah yeah okay and since we are talking about the roles i'll come back to the product owner again and like we we'll kind of uh, so these are the key relationships which a less product owner or an apo also will have to look into which is similar to a uh, you know as you see a product owner in scrum also that is he has to look into the scrum masters his relationship with the scrum master his relationship with the senior management or the key stakeholders his relationship with the customer or the end consumer base right then of course his relationship and the most important of all his relationship with the developers or his requirement area teams which he looks into so he might be looking into two to three teams together so he that relationship is very important and very key for his an apo's uh, success right so that was the important point which i wanted to cover now going back to uh, certain yeah now th this is a very this is my favorite slide uh, you know so uh, this kind of summarizes what we discussed just now so you have scrum you have less we have less huge in scrum we have scrum master po and you have a team right in less we have all this but in less huge we have an additional role called as apo so this is from roles perspective framework all three are frameworks correct product development yes less so okay so this is again a very um, from what uh, i think a very interesting question i don't know who asked uh, uh, i think this will again answer your question yes less and less huge is more for product development perspective as i told you less is primarily and majorly focusing on product development so this would answer that part of your question empiricism for all whether it is scrum less or less huge scrum master one per team for scrum and for less and less huge one scrum master from at least one, i mean at max three teams right so if it is so when we say three teams it will be mostly a requirement area right one one team uh, uh three teams focusing on one requirement area so that is a scrum master then product owner one single product owner for the entire product right now let's talk about events now i'm sure you would be interested to know what are the events we are adding in less so in scrum 
we just spoke about the phi events, right? In less, we have all the scrum events, right? In addition to that, we have two more events. That is initial PBR and overall retro. Now the names itself are quite, uh, uh, you know, self-evident. So very important. PBR is an official event in less. We know that in Scrum, we uh, Scrum Guide doesn't talk about PBR explicitly, but less talks. So product backlog refinement is an official event in less, uh, right? And we also have an initial PBR to start with. And of course, there can be multiple PBR. Initial PBR is nothing but if you are starting with a new less, uh, you know, newly introduced less uh, framework amongst your team, then there should be an initial PBR is what less guide talks about. Overall retro every sprint has to get over with an overall retro which will go like the representatives of all the teams should be there in this overall retro so these are the two additional events which are a part of it so th this is an important that's why i say i like this slide because at one go you come to know about everything scrum artifacts they are same no change into it product backlog sprint backlog and increment right and team, yes, uh, as I told you, Scrum, one team, less two to eight teams, and less huge, more than eight teams. Right? So th th this slide is uh, gives you a very high level overarching view about the differentiation points. I would like to... Uh, yeah. Kalpa, uh, yeah, sorry to interrupt, yeah. just a sec. Sorry. Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, one question. Sorry. Sure. So, uh, no does Scrum Master manage one team or more than one team? Yes. In less framework. Yeah. Yes. So, if it is in less, generally the rule is a Scrum Master can handle from one to three teams. So, if a requirement area has, let's say, for example, three teams, then there should be one is to three ratio. So, a less Scrum Master can handle at max three teams. Of course, I know that there are four teams is too much of a work for a scrum master so at max less framework recommends three teams kalpak rohita here okay. yes rohita just like how we have in scrum like you know as the teams mature and are very uh, you know comfortable with the scrum events where they don't need more i mean not monitoring like uh, guidance Mm -hmm. I think that's when the Scrum Master gets split across multiple teams, right? Will the same thing work here as well? Same I thing think works that's... here. Same thing yeah. works here. The okay. accountability of the Scrum Master, as I mentioned, apart from the technical excellence point, which I told you, rest everything is like Scrum Guide. There is nothing okay. else. If you know a Scrum Master accountability in Scrum Guide, you know what is a less Scrum Master accountabilities are and how his mindset should be. If the team matures, he has to, you know, over and in a certain trajectory as he progresses, he should take his step back and let the team be self-managed, take over. So I agree with you. It, it, the, his, his, uh, but yes, one point which I wanted to tell you uh, and which is, which is very clearly written in less is, less Scrum Master is a full-time dedicated role. So I know that in many companies, Scrum Master can be a part-time role as well. Right, like a business analyst or somebody from the team can take up a role of a scrum master. I know it is not an advisable thing, but a scrum guide also doesn't say explicitly about it. Right? Um, yes, so far the scrum master is available for the team to ensure that scrum is followed diligently. Uh, it's fine, but but less scrum master less has prescribed it that Les Scrum Master is a full-time dedicated role. So Les Scrum Master cannot be like partially doing something. So if your organization, let's say, is tomorrow deciding that we should uh, implement less, by the books, it should be a dedicated FTE. It has to be a headcount. Okay. It has to uh, be dedicated. Yeah. One question. Uh, yeah. It could be a cliche one, but uh, still hmm. uh, I got this uh, question. Uh, so the way we have uh, different uh, values uh, and principles for each framework, right? Scrum has got its own values uh, and principles. Safe has got its own values and principles. Right. So we have separate set of values and principles 
for less framework or it would be more or less uh, the scrum frameworks values and principle uh i'll just uh, uh, again coming back to what i from where i started scrum's values and principles i mean all our five openness courage all those along with our inspection transparency adaptation the three pillars those are intact in less ops very much there what less prescribes is just some additional part to it are certain rules more not diverging from what scrum says more in lines of scrum but less being more of it focused scale framework it more talks about technical excellence it talks about having a continuous improvement in terms of ci cd it talks more of automation right so scrum being a very um, relatively generic less takes all that and just add certain more in terms of how every team should focus on automation that's it nothing majorly different uh, ramya okay. got it. so but i the mean base is and the base is uh, i i feel that uh, rohita here that yeah, the scrum masters are always you know punished by saying that you are more like a hr person in the team that particular issue is primarily addressed by less by giving this technical uh, point added yeah uh, uh, because i you know this question was asked to me uh, in multiple forums uh, can we uh, use i mean implement less uh, across non it departments uh, like hr or uh, i mean you know other departments my question is you can attempt but you will not I, i'm not sure how successful it would be probably you should look up into other you know broader models like safe less is an it focused and less is very you can say explicit about it it is more of product based it focused scaled scrum framework where they are very dedicated that it's 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 it has its technical excellence as a parameter and that's the reason why coming to ramya's question also and coming to your point uh, less scrum masters a lot of things to do apart from what is scrum masters so it's similar to safe scrum masters as well i mean even there yeah, it, it has true. got some technical uh, excellence wherein we are supposed to also take care of each other's dependencies That's and uh, ci cd and all of that so rohita that addresses in safe as well safe as well and ramya uh, scaling framework yes yes uh, how much ever i have read safe right and kanban uh, let me tell you that's the reason i said essentially they address the same uh, you know uh, concerns about scaling just that safe talks more on overarching agile and less is very uh, true to scrum they are very specific to scrum yeah. that's it so actually <laughs> safe is like i mean it's a topic for another day all together we will Absolutely. have a version just... of uh, safe yeah. right skill to just yeah. one thing uh, how many uh, uh, sorry to interrupt hello yeah. hello sorry one question yes one yogesh yeah. hey yogesh yeah, yeah. uh hi uh, so how many slides are there because in the interest of time if there are certain things which are already go going to get covered then uh, we can hold on for the questions for some time and let you finish uh, yeah. uh, uh, otherwise I, i have a few questions then maybe yeah, i'll ask i just later. have uh, uh, just because slides are huge i told ramya okay. that uh, i just want to cover two slides about what are the additional events and less okay. certifications Okay. uh specifically for this so if you allow i'll cover that and then we can yes you. yes 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 yeah? that will help okay, yeah. okay so uh let yeah. me uh, specifically talk about uh, uh teams we spoke about yeah less events so uh, yeah so this this slide i wanted to just uh, you know present in front of you because we are talking about less and as i told you we have an overall pbr as well as an initial pbr so PBR is an official event of um, less and it's it's it has it encompasses across all the teams now one question can come into your mind who will be the audience of overall PBR obviously even uh, you know logically if we think about there is no point that entire team should go there so there can be a representative not always necessarily a scrum master maybe one person each team can attend an overall PBR right same goes with your overall retrospective also as you see here there is an overall retrospective which has to be across all the scrum teams under less right so the question comes 
should it be always the scrum master joining yes a less scrum master should be a part of overall retros but not necessarily that um only uh, scrum master maybe one person from team can also be there right so these are certain additional events which um, followed across um, uh, you can say less and that is something which you can keep in mind if you are talking about less uh, apart from that let me just quickly take you to the certifications uh, see less basics is a 6 hours course okay uh, and to understand the first certification that is the one which you see in the middle that is certified less basics you need to give at least 6 hours and get certified there is no assessment exam for that right that is the stepping stone of it and that gives you insight and deep dives about the additional scrum events in less and the apo role in in a nutshell but you do have less executives and less practitioners if anybody wants to anyone of you wants to go into a hands on experience on less and want to more and more practice it across your organization you can go for uh, a certified less practitioner uh certified less executives i would say you can go only if you want to become or if you're inclined to become a less coach right if you are more on coaching on less so again it purely depends like if you are more on practicing side and less on coaching side i know that we all still coach while we are practicing but i'm just saying like an agile coach can be, uh, definitely give this the you know the certified less executive uh, certification so this is just i just wanted to also talk about uh, the certifications part of it one hour guys is very less to talk about less but what i want to you know leave uh, uh, to you with some basic bottom line is it is like doing more with less so understand one thing essence is scrum it is just that we are adding certain additional role like an apo and some additional events like overall pbr or overall retro and certain additional accountabilities to a less scrum master that's it but yes as we as i told you there are a lot of uh, if you get into the details of it there are lots to talk about it and uh, of course we wouldn't have that much time so i thought i could just present these many uh, points today so we we can have questions and queries uh, now uh, you know if you have any yes kalpa thanks a lot it is a wonderful uh, session actually if you can go to the previous sli uh, slide which was uh, like i mean before the certification there was one right uh, right uh this one not this one the next one where in the initial uh, okay the events basically yeah events don't. yeah yeah okay uh, just a second yes this one uh, so I just wanted to know the frequency of uh, this initial PBR, overall PBR, and the uh, right. the retro. Uh, is it sure. at a release level or how it is? Right. So uh, overall retro, uh, you can go. I mean, overall retro is expected to go. Uh, I mean, expected by less to happen sprint wise, right? At the end of every sprint, it is expected. However, uh, based on the teams, because one thing I know a lot of people say that there shouldn't be a lot of meetings. So it can be maybe once in two sprints also, depending on how how many teams you have also and how bigger is your less canvas. So overall retro, retro is expected sprint wise. However, initial PBR is not expected to be in uh, a recurring event. It can be probably at this very initial beginning when we are mostly towards the start of the uh, initial few sprints. So initial PBR is just you can see a layout or you can see more on the design workshop side where we bring all the area product owners together and talk about high level requirement areas. That's it. But since we have overall PBRs during our sprints, we may not need initial PBR often. It's, it's just a start of it, the start of your sprint cycle. And all the other events have the same frequency like uh, daily scrums or planning, etc. OK, one point. Uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt before I forget one point I missed. Um, sprint planning is also divided into two. There is a sprint planning one and sprint planning two. So you remember we we always talk about what, why and how 
where we talk about what is like what are the product goals how is like how are we going to achieve a why we why is like why we are going to achieve those product goals and how is like how is that work is going to be done right that's what we discuss in a sprint planning effectively this is divided into sprint planning one and planning two in a less sprint planning not much of a change but it is just uh, you can see a bifurcation Okay, I think Lijo had a question. Yeah, yeah. I could work, Lijo. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the wonderful session, and it it indeed turned out to be a wonderful session. I, I'll tell you why. In first five minutes, I have to put my office laptop shut. You know, that's how effective you were. Thank you. And secondly, I hope I have, I have, I have some not quick ended up confusing you. All. That's all. I no, mean. no, no, no. You did not. You did not. You did not. Yeah. Thank you so much. So uh, my first question partially got answered just now because I wanted to understand whether there is an integrated sprint planning here, mm -hmm. and then we go into the you know uh, right. sub sprint planning to it. I think you just yeah, mentioned yeah. that now you know with sprint planning one and two. Um, and my second question is, when do you know that less is right for you? you know Good. because if 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 the management has to take a call or uh, between less or uh, safe uh, when do you know less is right okay so uh, just i'll touch base one second on the first question so this sprint planning one which is more on what and how that is what are the product goals and how uh, sorry uh, what and why that is what are the product goals and why we need those this sprint planning one is across the teams right where which is more of an integrated sprint planning one sprint planning two can be at a team level like okay these are the pro uh, product goals which have come under our team's kitty how are we going to implement which of course the development teams answer like this is going to be our sprint backlog etc etc right so uh, that's typically the way of uh, working now second question which is a very interesting question point rather see a uh, I think every organization would have certain OKRs and technical, you can say, uh, dimensions to it also. Uh, for example, if your product is more of, a, um, I would say, DevOps inclined, then and 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 the process is such that it is more of a, a you know, you can say CI/CD focused, where the the focus is not more on the functional requirement or development projects that's where probably less would be less handy and something like a scrum ban as they call it as would be more effective right i'll tell you where less is most applicable uh, lijo if you clearly know that you are developing a product right and your product definitely i would say is in that domain of complex if you remember our scrum uh, uh, that famous slide of project management the slide where we went we, when we go into the complex domain where we have less of uh, when we we are more uncertain about requirements and the technology but we surely know that there is a overarching need of this product which we are going to develop that is where less is more applicable where we clearly know that we would need feature teams we clearly know that we would definitely need requirement areas to consider or rather say logical modules to consider right that's where your and we know that it has to be scrum it cannot be kanban or it cannot be anything apart from less you may do pair programming in between but it has to be based on scrum that's where i would say if it is multi team it would be less right but again then it depends upon what is the because uh, even in my I know that many te pe uh, teams go for safe. So you have to make that clear distinction. Remember one thing less is scrum. Multi team scrum. So if you're choosing less, you have to choose scrum. You cannot choose anything else. And if you're choosing scrum and especially if you're choosing less, that means you're very clear that your product would have multiple requirement dimensions for it. It is not a automation focused or a CI CD based focus or that is not your primary OKR, right? Your primary OKR is to bring out a product in the market which has to achieve certain revenues or maybe like a new product development, which is quite complex. I don't know if I've answered that, but this can be one of the initial mindset. Uh, or oh, yes, you did. Oh, yes, you did. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, yeah.
thank you kalpak just one more question uh, regarding uh -huh. these events uh, so mm. we have this team retrospective but how about the uh, 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 scrum up scrum or the po sync kind of uh, meeting wherein right. multiple teams can sync up together yeah right see a uh, good question scrum up scrums uh, officially is not uh, part of less events or it is not prescribed as such it is not mentioned anywhere however uh, scrum of scrums can be you know it it definitely can be uh, 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 organized at your organizational level uh, less again is a framework it is a framework over scrum but again it's a framework it is not saying that we can't do scrum of scrums or like a you know like a overall release uh, planning event or etc those can be emergent events you organizations i know even in my uh, organizational context we do for, do scrum of scrums uh, it all depends upon because as you see here if you see this slide there are so many opportunities for the team to connect there is sprint planning one there is this overall pbr there is this overall retro there is this overall sprint review so uh, if your organizational context warrants the need of scrum of scrum again provided it is not too many meetings for you and a proper uh, reporting is getting followed and go ahead you know less doesn't stop so it is not explicitly mentioned not ex exactly it. exactly not explicitly mentioned just like story points or velocities are not explicitly yeah, mentioned in scrum guide right but we we uh, we thrive on velocity nowadays yes. <laughs> similar yeah. to that yeah kalpak uh, uh, there is no question uh, but there is a statement uh, yeah. in the chat okay uh, someone has asked if you can share the ppt it is very informative sure i would definitely share the ppt uh, this is not like a very uh, not something which is specific to me or anything this is uh, from the less portal only what i would also do instead is more than that i will share the less uh, portal links number 1 number 2 uh, i would share with you all case studies also because i'm sure um, if you all want to coach your clients or anybody on less you would want to see how organizations have done less because theoretically less doesn't need you to break your head as much as probably in when you would have to do it when you are learning scrum for the first time right but if you know scrum it is easier to know less right but uh, you need to know how less is implemented how organizations are doing it so i'll share those links i will share uh, that and this is purely taken from less works the official uh, site so i'll share that as well uh, just one parting note before we end uh, i uh, nobody asked about uh, i'm surprised about kpis <laughs> whether less has any specific kpis that is my favorite part of it uh, well let me tell you and break the suspense here less doesn't subscribe dedicated kpis as such so you, you know less is a framework the kpis which you follow for scrum like your you know your story your backlog health your defect ratio your uh, story points coverage um what is your velocity if it, that is also one of the measures uh, the same your burn down the same is applicable for less uh, the same happiness quotient the qualitative kpis would also be applicable for less right so there are no dedicated kpis if anybody has that question uh, i just wanted to address uh, that as well okay so yeah i i think that's pretty much uh, about it one last and uh, thank uh, yes sorry. yes um, yes so mm. if we have multiple product backlogs to address a larger uh, solution right enterprise wide then my understanding is uh, scale is the framework to go to right probably scale addresses the different areas like the portfolio management very good yeah right uh, uh, yes partially right but i would like to correct you out there uh, let's not ever say multiple product backlog because when it comes to scrum uh, as i said less is very loyal to scrum it will always say one product backlog but i i'm sure what i'm trying to come to is multiple product one product backlog is divided into multiple requirement areas so that requirement area can be like a mini product backlog for your requirement area team right but product backlog let me tell you is one product backlog 
divided into multiple and coming back to your question yes at a portfolio level um at the product level less works effectively uh, multiple success stories of less are there across the organizations and uh, whatever exposure i have to less um, i have seen it you know uh, working very well so you can think about it is if it is about your utility so even for portfolio of proje uh, uh, projects the, the would, less implementation works good you're saying you have seen companies implement less yes yes but again as i said uh, you have to deep dive a little bit more into how it works at the product level right and then see how less would be applicable because less is very much like one product backlog in multiple requirement areas it would work effectively uh, if you are following that scaled agile a scale scrum approach and uh, you have multiple teams so if it is at a portfolio level uh, it it would love uh, you know work apt at the product level so i would like to add one thing over here jaya uh, when you spoke about the portfolio uh, right uh, on the uh, safe right so with uh, whatever knowledge i have and whatever experience i have we should not go for portfolio level safe unless you are building something like as big as like a, sp a spacecraft or something like that you can still manage it till solution level but right. not at the portfolio level the moment you go to portfolio level there are like your safe essential safe will hmm. be getting uh, multiplied okay so we should not be uh, uh, implementing portfolio unless and until you are building like entire organization as big as like spacecraft yeah and just to add to what ravnya said uh, very effectively was also one point that at a portfolio level i think it's a combination of agile uh, you know design which we need to look at maybe one less or one uh, uh, you know safe may not be the perfect solution it has to be more of a you can say a, a blueprint planning has to be done if you're talking about a portfolio because if you're talking about a portfolio which is at org level right and uh, it has to be a huge design there right so it's it's actually a mindset so it correct, can correct. be very complex correct. it's a lot of top down approach right right thank you thank you very much for taking the time thank you so much kalpak for this uh, really informative session and uh, as i mentioned initially it it was i mean i predicted it to be wonderful one and it turned out to be a wonderful one thank you so much for take, uh, taking out time from your uh office work and uh, sparing some time over here well, all of you have taken time so i think that's fine but uh, thanks uh, ramya for organizing this session and initiating this uh, amazing work you are doing you and vivek uh vivek uh, would you like to add uh, from your end Thanks, Ramya. Thanks, Kalpa. First of all, I mean this was very quite informative for today, and I had a few more questions, but yeah, I mean uh, eventually those got answered. So I mean just to uh, summarize, maybe you know, Kalpa, this is what I would like to understand. Like, if you are going at this less, you know, stick to uh, no scrum, but then I mean if you want to differentiate it between safe and less, you know, safe gives you that opportunity, or okay, gives you that. Uh, you know, uh, that uh, combination of multiplying, you know, uh, into different uh, adding of different flavors. But then, when we stick to less, it will stick to stuff. That is exactly the whole essence of it. I and mean, I don't, whatever I could, you know, relate to this session, you know, it it, it seemed to be, you know, uh, because I work on safe and I I know how complex and how you know difficult it becomes to manage. Uh, as and when you exactly. try to expand on a project level, but uh, you know, whatever you know, we we just discussed in this one hour, I think this this is quite you know, uh, uh, you know, though it might be complex to manage, but then it it, it is less in compared to how safe goes ahead and you no know, uh, does the implementation go. Right, absolutely.
any other questions anybody has to add or maybe we have come towards the end of the session yeah i would like to add oh. one last point uh, not related to uh, this uh, thing since you have already pointed out uh, something related to kpis and okr right so what i would just like to add is i just uh, uh, like two days back i have just spoken to one of my friends who has done certification in okr and successfully implementing so i am uh, definitely going to invite her uh, for uh, imparting knowledge on uh, okr so whoever is interested uh, i mean if maximum uh, of us are interested in knowing uh, implementation of okr and all then we can plan a session around it that would be perfect and ramay i think you can also probably take a session on safe because i think now since we have touched base on less uh, i'm sure a lot of people would also want to talk about safe i guess we have many safe experts uh, not just me uh, i and vivek both were part of the same project and same uh, product uh, and all of that and apart from both of us i guess even rohita is certified safe uh, uh agilist and we have others as well who are certified so it's it's not just going to be uh, me alone conducting a session or whatever but it could be a, a group uh, study kind of a thing i must say on safe i'll be attending that one ramya considering the vastness of safe uh, i would love to have it as a discussion so that we have many ideas pitched in from you know multiple people who have seen safe being implemented or practiced or followed yeah yes yes completely agree so it's like the more uh, maybe the more we discuss uh, the less it would be for uh, safe and uh, everyone has got their own uh, concept of safe so maybe uh not to just uh, contradict each other just for an open discussion we can have a, a one uh, session on safe from everyone who can contribute yeah, yeah open discussion have, would be wonderful yeah we also have different frameworks in safe so everyone we can take an opportunity at least one framework few topics and we can discuss there sure and I Karthor, think thank now, you so much for the wonderful session. It was yeah. amazing. You're welcome, uh, Rohita. I think pretty late on your side, but thanks for staying up. No, it 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 like uh, someone else mentioned uh, they had to shut down the laptop and concentrate on your session. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to let go of uh, my sleeping time because it was really good. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So less uh, less is very less touch based framework. Uh, uh in the industry i must say who very less people are uh, implementing so this was really helpful so even uh, if we have to kind of uh, implement uh, less with this knowledge at least we have some uh, way forward if not at level that you are implementing definitely but uh, i i can say that maybe we would be able to take it ahead uh, from at least from one maybe we would be at 10 now after this session for sure absolutely absolutely I I I think this was the basic. Uh, I'm I know in one hour we cannot touch base on all thing, but if you even if you know this much, I'm sure there would be a starting point to where you can think about and uh, implementation would be a long term story, right? How prepared your organization would be to implement it. Um, but yes, uh, of course, if any one of you is interested, you all can go ahead and subscribe to the less basic certification. Also, you would get certified and. but again not necessary you can just go through the information online on the less site which is very much out there and still learn and implement right it is not like uh, you need to just like in scrum we get certified it really adds on a lot of value similar for that less you not necessary it i mean it always helps to be certified uh, but not non negotiable i would say you can always understand the concepts and implement it Oh, I I just got certified much later. Uh, I was implementing less for for a while, so that's fine. I mean, yeah. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. I think uh, we should close now. It's already yeah. nine nineteen over here, and yeah. for Rohita, it's like too late. Thank you. So we will yeah. not hold uh, much of everyone's time. And thank you, everyone. Enjoy your weekend. 
and uh, we'll meet at uh, in the next session thank you everyone see you happy weekend so, thanks thank and you happy guys bye bye happy weekend thank you everyone happy weekend thank you everyone